it's Daisy and I'm really excited about doing this video blog today. It's actually a request um, of a long term friend of mine who's also a very, very talented writer. Um, and my friend Sam asked today, what is the big myth surrounding the calorie? What is it that means that we can't just do calories in versus calories out to just get on with our lives, lose weight, stay healthy? Um, so I'm going to answer it for him as well and I'm putting it in a video to answer it for all you guys as well because I get it, um, that kind of question I get asked all the time. What's a good calorie? What's a bad calorie? Why do we even have good or bad calories? Um, so I'm going to explain that for you. Okay, um, so just to start with, um, as a sort of overview, if you're really, really overweight, so we're talking, you know, your BMI is well above 25, then any kind of calorie restriction is going to be good for you. So you're looking at something below 2000 calories is going to get you weight loss. Um, depending on what kind of calories will, you know, determine how fast that is and how effective and how sustainable that is. But at the end of the day, if you're very overweight, calorie restriction will start to bring it back down. Um, for the average healthy person that wants to tone up, wants to feel healthier, and you know, wants to start to reduce the risk of diabetes, heart disease, osteoporosis, all of those kinds of illnesses that happen later in life, then the best thing you can do is start to look at what kind of calories you're eating. Um, now Sam actually said to me um, that he wanted to know what was the difference between good, good, good fats and bad fats. Um, again, I get this all the time. People who are afraid to eat fat, um, and I can tell you I am the biggest person to say this. I used to avoid putting fat on everything. I wouldn't eat butter, I wouldn't eat oil. Uh, you wouldn't even catch me putting like oil to cook in the pan. I would just cook everything dry, which was a bit disgusting. Um, so yeah, I never used to put any of that on there. If I had a fatty meat, I wouldn't eat it. When I was a vegetarian, if there was anything with fat in it, I wouldn't eat it. Um, so, you know, the body needs fat to survive. There are really, really good fat sources. You've got your oily fish, um, your avocados, really, really high in fat and calories, but really good for you. Um, olives, obviously olive oil, um, your nuts as well. <laughs> you know, almonds, cashews, walnuts are probably the best. Walnuts and almonds, I'd say, would be the best. Almond butter is a really, really good alternative to, you know, usual spreads and jams if you absolutely have to eat toast. Um, and it makes a really, really nice dip for vegetables as well. Um, so they're the kinds of fats you can eat, and the obvious ones are the fats in meat. Um, you know, a really, really good cut of meat from a butcher won't have that much fat on it, but it'll be really, really good for you on, you know, a fairly regular but occasional basis throughout the week. So you're eating it regularly, but not eating it every day. Um, and I would definitely recommend doing that as well. Uh, I personally cut the fat off all my meat because I'm a fussy eater. You know, you should have some of it, just not to excess. Um, and with other kinds of calories, um, Sam also mentioned here um, about sugar products and diet products. If you see anything with low fat on the label or fat reduced, it's guaranteed to have a ton of sugar in it. And I don't care if it says low calorie as well, it's going to have sweeteners in it. And the sweeteners are just, it's like putting poison in your body. It's like putting diesel in a petrol engine car. It's not going to run but it's also gonna mess up your body. So not only have you got less energy, you're also gonna have more health problems. Um, so things like diet soda is the absolute worst diet soda. Do not drink it. Drink fresh water, drink herbal tea. You know, I re rarely ever drink anything like Coke or lemonade. The only time I will ever drink it is if I um, go out, and this is quite rare anyway, and I'll have that as a mixer. Um, but other than that, really don't touch the stuff. Um, and what I would also say is when you're eating sugar laden foods, you've got to remember the kind of effect that has on your body. That's going to send a huge insulin response. And at the end of the day, eating sugar laden food, even if it's low in calories, is going to make you feel really, really hungry because your body has had a massive spike of insulin and then a massive drop. So it's going to start to send hunger signals back to your body straight away. 
um, which obviously is not ideal. So even when you're eating your fat-free, sugar-laden products, you're guaranteed to be eating more food overall to sustain your body and to answer those confusing hunger message signals. So just have a bit of consideration for that as well. Um, and that comes back to the point of calories in versus calories out. There was a time a few years ago where I would get by on eating five chocolate bars a day. Five chocolate bars, but I'd eat nothing else. So you're looking at around 800 to 1,000 calories, which isn't very much. It's nowhere near enough, considering I was an elite athlete at the time. Um, but I still lost a ton of weight. But at the same time, I then developed a load of health problems. So consider it that way. You can eat that kind of crap if you want, and eat nothing else, but at the end of the day, you are still just as unhealthy as someone who was grossly overweight. So worth considering for any of you out there who are worried about your sugar levels but won't be taken seriously, or you're worried you won't be taken seriously at the doctors, um, anyone that eats a huge amount of sugar, go and get a diabetes test. OSAP, really, really important, particularly if you know you're thirsty all the time, particularly if you feel tired all the time, go and have a look. Um, and, you know, just for an example, if you were, you know, five for eight and you want to know where you are to be healthy, you want to be around the region of about 130 to 160 pounds, so about nine to 11 stone. Uh, that's for a five for eight person is quite healthy. If you have more muscle mass, then it's probably going to be towards the top end. If you have less muscle mass, you want to be closer to sort of nine stone. Um, but that's quite healthy. You know, if you're five foot eight and you're 14 stone, your BMI is about 30, which is seriously high. And in that instance, reduce calories. In the instance where, you know, you're five foot eight and you're 150 pounds and you are then at that stage where you're classed as healthy, but you don't feel it start getting smarter with the calories you're eating. You know, you can still eat the same amount of calories, so say you take in 2,000 calories a day, make sure it's coming from fruit, veg, real, like, high fibre foods, so you, things like lentils, chickpeas, cruciferous vegetables, salad, all really, really good food. Get some grains in that diet as well, particularly if you're exercising, really, really important. So things like brown rice, wouldn't necessarily advocate pasta. Um, oats are a really good option as well. And on top of all that, of course, your protein, really, really important. Now, people look at protein and say, oh, is it high in calories? Protein is actually the same amount calorie-wise as carbohydrates, so both four calories per gram. So if you're going to eat one over the other, try and eat protein. Not excessively, because if you eat too much protein, you can get ill. But try and make sure that your plate is divided evenly, so you're not too heavy with the carbs. Again, it will trigger an insulin response. Protein will be so. So it's a good calorie to have. But at the same time, look at that. They're exactly the same calories in terms of number but they have a completely different reaction to your body. Fats have nine calories per gram, so a lot more. It's over double, but they are good for you as well. And some people are actually fat adapted, which means they'll burn fat easier than they will burn carbs. And, you know, that goes for the same way. There will be people that can't burn fat and they will live off just burning glucose, and they'll be the people that want to eat every couple of hours. Now, there's nothing to say that that's wrong, you know, that's really good, but they have to make sure they're eating the right food groups. So not relying on simple sugars, that they're still eating every couple of hours, but they're eating really good carbs. And again, you can total that up so that you have the same amount of calories throughout the day, but you're eating them at sensible times. So again, smart eating, smart, not necessarily calorie counting, but observation. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's given you a few other ideas. But yeah, the most important thing to remember is you know your body best and you know whether it's working or not. You'll be able to tell that from how you feel. It's not healthy to feel tired every single day when you wake up. It's not healthy to feel nauseous or to feel lethargic, to feel like you have absolutely no energy, you know. And there's a ton of health problems that people put up with, myself included, I have done before. Um, thinking it's normal when if you really just assessed your nutrition, assessed your sleeping pattern, that's a big thing as well. Um, you know, 
and start looking at eating smarter rather than restricting calories to try and lose weight or whatever. Say people tell you, oh, if you eat less calories, you'll sleep better. Not necessarily true. So start eating smarter. Start considering that it's not just calories in, calories out. That's a huge lie. Um, and then hopefully you're going to be well on your way to getting healthier. And the best piece of advice I can give you without sounding too salesy is to ask a nutritionist for a nutrition plan. Have someone who knows what they're on about help you, monitor you for several weeks and show you how to monitor yourself. It's the most important part. And then once you know how to do it, just carry on doing it. And how long do you do it for? The rest of your life. Simple as that. Should never be something that is a quick fix. It should always be something that's sustainable for your body and you can do over and over and over again. So hopefully that's answered your question, Sam. Hopefully that's answered it for a lot of other people as well. So just to do a quick recap, calories in versus calories out, big lie. Diet food, diet sodas, low fat foods, all full of rubbish, do not eat them. It's again, it's a lie, it's a trick for your body. It's sending the wrong signals to your body. Fats can be good and bad fats. Eat your good fats in moderate to small amounts to sustain your body, you might find you actually burn them well. And obviously if you do know that you burn through carbs quite easy and you know you need to eat regularly, do so, but try and eat good carbs rather than bad carbs. We already talked about those, you know, your, your grains, certain fruits as well. <clears throat> um, and obviously the last point, if you are excessively overweight, any kind of calorie restriction is going to be good for you. But if health is your long-term goal, then you need to assess what kind of calories you're eating. Okay, that's all for me. Bye for now. See ya.